Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our Saving a Disaster campaign. Uh, this time uh, we are at the very end of uh, the Dark Event Massacre campaign. It's time for us to finally go with the Advent Network Tower and eventually also start uh, the last uh, part of the campaign, Waterworld. Uh, so. We do have a few options here. I think I'll just select one extra soldier and that's all the intel we do have available. Uh, so might as well give it a go. It's all or nothing. We won't have time to advance our research or deal with the wounded. We should only deploy once we're hey, It's so good. Uh, don't be too afraid, uh, Bradford. We're going to infiltrate the advent network. Good. Let me come up with a good uh, B team that is going to infiltrate the tower and then afterwards we're going for Waterworld. Okay, I figured I would just put a lot of characters that are not making it into the last mission. Real Hogbite instead of Fake Hogbite. We got uh, Circuit uh, here in order to help us. I'm thinking almost about uh, just replacing them for the second Psy Operative. But then again, Psy Operatives are super strong. Might as well just go with the Reaper. Yeah. I want to see some... I know that you guys also want to see uh, some Psy Operative uh, action. And having them on board is never a bad idea. Mimic Beacon. And potentially... Hmm, what else could we do? I think that that uh, looks like a good uh, loadout. So what I was about to say, we basically loaded up a few characters that wouldn't make it into the final, uh, the final round. We got Zane here and I wanted to test uh, him because he was, uh, keep in mind, kind of uh, the specialist with those weird abilities, uh, multitasking. Uh, that uh, then also allowed for Ever Vigilant, uh, Guardian, and so on and so forth. So maybe together with the Sniper, it actually go is going to make uh, sense. He has the superior hair trigger. I'm almost uh, thinking about giving him a superior magazine instead. Yeah, it's a shame that we can't use the anti-material uh, rifle, because that one would have worked quite well. Be it as it may, we're just going to go with three shots. That's good enough for now. And that weapon is fine as well. We're going to launch the mission. Let's not overthink it. It's just a network tower. We're definitely going to be able to do it. Normally you do it with three, this time with four. So let's jump into it and just rush through the mission. And we landed. As per the, uh, the usual, this time we need to go on the left hand side. That's interesting. As per the usual, uh, we will need to fight our way uh, through the network tower and eventually go and infiltrate that here. By the way, fun fact with the Reaper, you can move all the way to here and just solo that mission. Should have maybe considered that when making the rash decision not to go with it. Moving up. And let us just be careful for now. Not trying to pull anything. We have the sniper here, so we've got to be careful with him as well. Potentially just hunkering down. And look at that. Immediate shredding. And there is a triple pack of... Uh, actually a quadruple pack of enemies behind it. We're seeing like what? Two Archon sentries and two Codices? No, Spectres actually. 
Oh, the Archons are part of his pack, but the Spectres are not. So, Spectre Elite with the other two Spectres is a separate pack. Well, isn't it great to, to actually have all of them so close together to one another? The Valkyrie for Domination. That would be a good Domination. Okay, so we're staying seeing one. I'm almost thinking about mind controlling the other one. But we're in the open, so... Not sure about it yet. Can't charge in, because that would trigger. Could have um, used the Shredder gun beforehand, so... That's not clever. This here would definitely trigger. Gotta be really careful not to overdo it. Overdrive it is. We're not in a timed mission. Let's just, just shred the uh, Valkyrie here. That's one. Very nice. Thirty-seven percent is too low. We don't want to get rid of uh, the Andromedon. We do have one cover removal. The question is, is it worth that? I think the answer is yes. Even though I could have played it more optimally. There's plenty of reason for still doing it that way. Valkyrie. That's an extra hit. I like it. That could be another hit. A 3 to 6. Potentially a kill. You know what? Might as well go for it. Down to 1 HP. How fitting. We could kill it with a Volt for sure. This here should not trigger. Not moving into any new spaces. Yep. Okay. And let's kill this guy. Of course, it does not hit. You don't want to immobilize anyone. Let's just go and kill the Valkyrie again. It's unfortunate that we have used uh, the rapid fire cooldown for it. Overall, still fine. This guy will start moving in, and if we're playing our cards right, the Spectres will not immediately come. He cannot take uh, cover, hence the Bulwark, uh, i.e., automatic cover that the uh, mech normally provides does not matter in terms of just dealing with everything how about giving an aid protocol over here taking an aid out protocol ourselves that's good i was hoping we would actually take an aid protocol
Oh, wow. His hacking score is garbage. Barely a shutdown, which is okay. We just traded his action against the action of the Andromedon. And we can now focus on his friend over there. Reloading. Still staying here. Nice and tight. Let's hit the Valkyrie. Very nice. Good job. I hate to do that, but I really don't have a lot of options here. I would want to charge in, but that's really not happening. Now, lens could be a thing, but it could also be a thing for next turn. We can't really kill it, so I'm wondering, are we 6 to 8 soul fire, or are we trying to... Um, are we trying to just... Deliberate that target? Insanity, it could be panic, it could be um, disorientation, it could be mind control. If it's mind control, we actually would have a small problem small-ish because all three would be controlled but yeah we missed anyways didn't really work out well wasn't trying to mind control him what we can do though is although this guy here is stunned we can start hit, uh, hitting him and there is a chance there would have been a chance to build up momentum so we got um, someone completely outside of cover. Okay, never mind. Never mind. In which case, what we're going to do is two, four, six, eight. Actually, killing this um, Andromedon here. That'll provide us at least with one focus. We're going to parry. Reload Overwatch. Reload. I like the idea of uh, of a sniper on a specialist, but I'm realizing the distinct downsides, which is they have so much kind of one usable actions, and that really only comes into play when you do have the ability to do something else on top. Got an Overwatch here and got a nice little hunter down. I mean, yeah, we could go for an Ionic uh, Storm. But we could also wait two more turns until, until our Overdrive is ready. Good, so far so good. No one walked into our Overwatch trap. Our elaborate Overwatch trap just standing there. The other option is taking the high ground and then just going to town with them. I think that would potentially overdo it a bit. Might as well just move forward, trigger the pack and get it over with. Okay, good. Well, that's a starter, right? Good, overdriving. Let's soften up the Spectre here. Like it. Like it. Continuing to go to town with them. I could simply start to parry here and let Reflect handle the rest. We don't have 
uh, Blade Storm, which is a pity. What we do have though is stasis and a good old fashioned null lens, which would hit these guys even if they are not visible. Continuing to hit this guy. Okay, fair enough. Valkyrie's almost down. You know what? We could do that Malm shot here. But it would end our turn. I'm just wondering. Hmm. If I was to use Mimic Beacon number one, maybe together with Aid Protocol, or alternatively with moving a bit further, uh, that wouldn't be too bad, would it? The other alternative is just going to hit the Valkyrie. Hmm. We could try to hit it and then shift. Uh, one action to Hogbite, let Hogbite kill it, but that would uh, lead to a pretty sizable retaliation. So instead, let's move up. Using this here. And we can also soul fire. It will automatically hit, ignores cover completely. Oh, I forgot. Well, that is going to feedback again, so he will take yet more speed. Yeah, that didn't really work out so well, did it? Good. Momentum to parry. Spectre Prime just wants to get into safety. Takes a half-hearted shot. Okay, cool. Another shadow bound. Yep. First one didn't really learn his lesson. <laughs> okay, good. I actually thought it was a Spectre Elite and not a Spectre Pri uh, Prime. Also, as I wouldn't have just used uh, mm, a simple attack on him. So that damage here could have been prevented. It's not the end of the world, but yeah. Anyways. You get the point. Let's try to kill the Archon here. Potentially the most dangerous enemy. Specifically when it gets a bit closer. Okay, we're not going to use another Mimic Beacon. Instead, what we are going to do is... We're going to Stasis the Prime. No counterplay against that. A little bit of Lightning Hands. Make a statement. Finishing this guy here. And... Hmm. 
Hmm. I mean, we could move all the way over here and just take a shot. But there is a chance of us triggering something. Now let's move over here. That's still cover uh, for our uh, Psy Operative. Yeah, and I didn't want to trigger anything, so we're playing it safe. This uh, high, high ground prevented us from having line of sight. Lamentable. But okay, it is what it is. Moving into cover. Spectre Prime could be a hit. Let's use eight protocol. The prime will not be able to kill us with one go. Okay, it's vanishing. That is interesting. However, I know for a fact that it did not disappear. It just vanished. What? Oh, there we go. I was like, how is that possible? All right, 50-50, let's kill it. There we go. Good, Hawkbite can't just be topped off. I think we got one more Spectre to go. Okay, interestingly enough, uh, apparently that guy has decided to just camp over there. Literally right there. <laughs> Interesting. Didn't know that you could just, uh, with their invisibility, that you could just use an AoE effect and hover over. almost hit by a rider effect mind control would have been a great option here and this might kill it good let's reload and re uh, group everything is going well so far I'm still trying to get to a, a judgment regarding that sniper rifle on our specialist. I think I don't like it as much as I thought I would. I thought it could be a full-fledged kind of replica for um, for a sniper, almost like you do a uh, two and one. But the problem is, as always, action economy. Yes, you can shoot. And yes, to a degree, you can also deal quite a sizable or remarkable amount of damage. 
But then again, all of the other skills like dual, uh, dual, eight protocol wouldn't really matter a lot because you never are in the situation where you could do that. Of course, unless you do have the chosen rifle, which we have not given him yet. So with a chosen rifle, things might look different. By the way, we've just realized that there are enemies right over there. Let's pull them. Good. Going for a nice little cover and let's overwatch and overwatch and I'm not even sure why why he got another shot. Oh, potentially due to the hair trigger. I see. Good, this should trigger. There we go. Burning and quite singed trying to get the mech down okay that worked like a charm good every single one of them is shredded now shreddered not necessarily shredded They are too far away, we can't really reach them. And unless this here is going to work out, by the way, wait a second, we're not doing that yet. First of all, L8 protocol over there. And then we're going to hay uh, haywire over here. Fantastic, good. So eight protocol and then haywire. So this is likely not going to work. 22% is not great. Might want to go for just a shutdown. Okay, we could have even controlled the unit. Good. We got two enemies that effectively can act. And I would like them to really move a bit up. Nice little hit. I like it. Good, see, the shutdown uh, did work overall. Trying to hit him. Ooh, that was a solid, very solid hit. Potentially too good to pass by. Yeah, perfect scenario would be stasis on the third guy, but that one is out of range. So we're going to take the second best, which is killing one, heavily injuring the other. Correction. Just killing both of them right away.
moving up. Getting that sweet, sweet extra loot. I would like to take some high ground, but it's unfortunately not going to work. But what I can do is start hitting it and prepping it and then actually finishing him. Good, we still got another enemy pack somewhere. Moving up, reload, moving up, and let's take some cover. Potentially one more pack in here or on the rooftop. Reload uh, the Mac. Good, everybody's reloaded. We got our major cooldowns uh, back as well. And the option to get onto that roof without a grappling hook have just disappeared. Great, cool. You love to see it. Not only one, but both entrances actually disappeared at the same time. Props were props are due. XCOM does not uh, disappoint in the unfair department. They will take uh, all of the letters from you, if need be. Good, Sane moves up. And we are going to wait here. Overwatching, ending turn. I hope it's not going to be an anticlimatical ending where we're opening the door then there's nothing there and we just hack it no there is a final pack the uber boss arrived covering fire okay We do have, does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Okay, so far so good. Might as well just get that down. There we go. That's the spirit. I love it. Can't really get the high ground against them, can we? No cannot but we can move up sort of here and just start shredding both of these guys I mean, heck, why not? Moving up. Overdriving. Let's just try to get both of them down. That's exactly how you're not supposed to do it. Come on. Alright, 
moving up here I do have a plan it's not going to kill anyone merely injure them unfortunately it's going to waste all of his focus and let's just try to hit as much damage onto them as possible might be a kill maybe but it needs to be a pretty hefty hit yeah didn't work out okay cool instead of null lancing which would have been a nice idea we're just going to take him out those two should not be able to kill hogbite blade storm would now be fantastic which is just shows us again how important blade storm is okay cool well is going to hit all three yes no maybe we can hit two can we hit those two no but we can hit those two which isn't bad if you think about it but before we do anything outrageous let's just heal hop right okay and hop right on the other hand Can somehow not hit this guy which is strange we're just going to move over here and trying it from this side hmm, okay let's try something else real quick So that solved a lot of problems right there. This might solve two problems at once. Okay, cool. It did exactly that. I think we're yeah we're done with that map moving in killed every single one of them let's move up and we're hacking the workstation Cool rewards, I like it, but none of them really matter. Good, and that's that for the network tower. It took a bit longer than expected. I'll cut it here. It was still a fun. Um, it was still a fun exercise, so I'll cut it here. We're going to directly jump into Waterworld. 
I will skip you the loading and all of the preparation. Waterworld will be a two-parter as per the usual. And we're going to see just how difficult that can be uh, with our remaining team. Thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoy content saving your disaster campaigns and the like, then leave a comment and a like down below. And see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.